What's up, you guys? Shardmas Prime here, doing another online Zoom interview with the MHT. We are here with the Marvel Hasbro team. We have Dwight, Dan, and Ryan. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, Ross. How about yourself? Uh, doing very good. Very good. Uh, I really appreciate having this opportunity to talk to you guys once again and, uh, and to discuss action figures. I uh, hope you guys have been doing well on your end and there have been a ton of figures coming out throughout this whole pandemic. Hasn't stopped the toy industry or anything at all. So I'm just assuming you guys have been consistently busy uh, as you've ever been. And then the whole PulseCon event, which I thought was a big success from my end, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. I love my, I, one huge bonus for me is I, I'm a musician. I love live music and Tenacious D and Fall Out Boy was a huge highlight uh, for me as, as well as, you know, the, the panels, you know, Mar new Marvel Legends and Transformers and all the goodies and everything. So that was, that was a lot of fun. I don't know, I don't know who came up with that, but kudos, kudos. Cause I, I thought I had, I had a great time. I hope you guys had fun doing it as well. No, I, I, I love actually, that you love the music too, Russ. Just to throw that out there. That was yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal for me. I was like, I, I was really digging it. I was, I've actually been still listening to those bands actually for days after. Like when I go to a live show, I leave pumped and then I'm listening to that band like the rest of the week. So yeah. it's been a whole bunch of Fall Out Boy, like <laughs> a lot of bunch of yeah, Fall Out Boy. Ryan had a joke about Fall Out Boy in our presentation for the panel and I made him cut it because I was like, I think that's going to be bad, but <laughs> oh, regret it. So my bad, Ryan, my bad. If it's not rap, Dan's like, I'm not interested in it. That's not yeah, true. Yeah, it's, like, not. But it's not rap. Cut it, cut it. But um, the coolest, man, the coolest so thing you guys about been doing, it. say that again, Dwight? I'll say the coolest thing about it is I got to watch panels from my uh, friends that I never get to see. When I'm at Comic-Con, I don't have time to go watch their panels. I'm on the floor talking with all of you guys. So That's to be great. able to sit back and enjoy the Transformers panel or the Star Wars panel was something that I never get a chance to to do. So it was it was awesome for me just as a fan of uh, stuff, you know, uh, as well. So, Are you guys like completely separated over there? I, I like that little intro thing where, you know, it shows the Dwight walking down the hall saying good morning to Dan and everything, or Ryan and everything. And you guys, it, like, are you guys on opposite ends of the buildings and you just never see what the other team is working on? And so it's like everything's just kind of a big surprise or you guys ever like, whoosh, whoosh, like there's, there's go to real tech <laughs> there are definitely parts of the building that are blocked off that you can't get access to if you're not part of that team um because oh, wow. there's a lot of you know sensitive top secret stuff that all the different teams work on and it's not to keep you know us out of it it's more just to keep what they're working on safe because everybody works on these you know giant release plan yeah. schedules where they want things out there when they want to announce them and there's just too many, you know, there's just too many passionate people, even inside of Hasbro, that you just don't, you know, there's sometimes you just got to protect yourself from them, you know, uh, inside as well as out, because wow. some people you just, you know, you're not even thinking about it. You're like, that's amazing. And then you go home and you tell somebody and it's like, then you're like, oh, shit. So wow. we just okay. can't, you know, we just have to, you know, keep that stuff under wraps as best as possible. But um, we're kind of, there's different buckets in the building where uh, we're all mixed together. I, I sit around. The Star Wars team, um, some of the uh, Power Rangers and Ghostbusters and Transformers and GI Joe teams. So they're all like the designers are all kind of mixed into a big action brand bullpen. Um, I think we're spread out over what three bays, and then there's a wall, and then on this other wall is a few more people. So you know, it's it's not you know it's not we're all right on top of each other, but we're all pretty much able to share trade secrets pretty effectively. Okay, so all right, so you're 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 connected but separate, kind of kind of like how I was imagining, kind of how I was speculating. And I have some questions that I've written down here for you guys that you may have seen already. Um, but I I sent you five, but I got ten. So let's see if we. <laughs> so I'm curious to see if we can get through all of them. That would be that that would be great. Um, the the first question I I wrote down was just talking about pinless joints, and I just wanted to know. From my perspective, some figures don't have the pinless joints because they're just uh, figures that were tooled 
before that technology came in. Is there an initiative to eventually bring in pinless joints to like all figures? Is that a goal? I think ultimately that would be awesome if it's possible, but there's some characters that it's just not, which is why you get some characters that have pinless arms, but not legs. Uh, there's certain draft angles that need to be met. There's certain uh, textures that would go away if we did that uh, um, pinless tech. So we rely heavily on our engineers, both uh, here in the States as well as our engineers in um, HFE to help us figure out which, which and where are the right places to use the technology. Um, so it's, a, it's not a, as easy as just saying use it everywhere because it just doesn't work that way for manufacturing. Not today, but you know, they're always, they're, you know, amazingly advancing their technologies as well. Um, so, you know, you know, five years from now, two years from now, maybe yes, we could go that way. But right now today, we're not quite set up for that, but we're going to be using it where we can. Awesome. Awesome. Now for uh, designers, now I, I don't know how the process really works. And this is something that a little pet peeve of mine, something that's kind of bothered me is when I'm doing my reviews, I look up reference images for the character that I'm talking about, especially if it's a character I'm not as familiar with. I have not uh, read the Maximum Carnage book. So I was reviewing the Absolute Carnage. Great figure, by the way. I love it. I love it. It's awesome figure. But I really only found one reference image of Absolute Carnage that actually matched the figure. And I wanted to know, is it, is it often that it's one picture kind of used for reference for the whole figure, or is it more like uh, multiple images to kind of get a general sense of the character? It depends on when we're re releasing the figure dependent upon how long it's been in lore. When it's a new figure and we have a sneak peek from New York Publishing, often they will give us a picture to go off of, like here's a new design. And then once that character gets designed into the book, sometimes they evolve or change or as different artists, you know, get, get a crack at them, they add their own little flair to them and the characters sometimes evolve. So if it's a character that's been out for five or six years before we tackle it, we can kind of look at everything and kind of pull it together. But on a character like that, where we were starting with a relatively new design, you know, a year or so ago when we did it, we only had very limited resources. So that's why sometimes there's discrepancies. We call it basically, it's a, you know, uh, concept art, um, you it's know, which is what movies. we do for the MCU figures as well. We actually have that same technology for a lot of the comic characters where when we're doing the new ones, but if it's an older character, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mine Google and, um, try to find as much reference in the Marvel Unlimited app, you know, that type of stuff is super helpful for, uh, you know, diving back into characters that have been out for a while. Nice. Okay. Kind of like the Nimrod, right? You have the multiple, yeah. you know, your contemporary, your classic. So when you have the opportunity to do that, when you, okay, I get it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, now I've noticed recently also with the, with some of the sculpts, you have been able to retool previous sculpts. Like for instance, the Jocasta figure, um, there's these straps around the waist and I'm fairly certain that's the Moonstone body mold with added tooling on top of it. So it looks like you're able to take previous molds and change and adapt and add things or take things out. Is, is, is that what's going on or, or was that like just brand new? I, I, have, I suspect it was retooled from an existing sculpt. Uh, we probably we use the existing sculpt as a starting point, mm -hmm. but the torso is all new. Okay. But we, we used the Moonstone as an underlay because we were using the existing arms and legs from Moonstone, and we needed to make sure that the, the existing arms would fit. So the easiest thing to, to do now in the digital realm of most sculpts being done digitally is that we had the, uh, you know, a good a digital asset that we could start with. So we adjusted her proportions, added the straps, uh, the metal like uh, bra and, and stuff that she has on her. You know, we added those types of details, but um, that's why it looks very similar to what you remember from the Moonstone. If we could get that kind of treatment with the Omega Red body, because that's one that we've been wanting to see kind of make uh, more appearances. I think it may have been reused for Warpath. Yes. And yeah, then I think that's the last one. But yeah, that, I love that Omega Red body. That 
yeah, seeing that being reused like that would be great. A lot of people are wondering um, in 2022, are we going to see a Sam Raimi verse Spider Man wave? Hmm. Can't say. <laughs> Can't say. We're, we, we have started 22 planning um, with spring first, and then we'll get to fall later. Um, but Spider Man is. You know, we, we always have a lot of Spider-Man items every year, and we know that that's on the list. I think that's on our, most of our team's internal lists, too, are fans of that. Um, and we've been kind of talking about this today that, uh, you know, there's just some kind of business things involved that are more on, like, uh, the marketing kind of side to work through, too, uh, especially for programs like the Fox movies and certain talent rights. And so it, it's more complicated than, than fans kind of, think but you know we, we we love it too and um you know hopefully we can work something out but just because kind of Raimi verse figures were made by toy biz and for a little bit um by hasbro in the early early days there's other things that we need to take into account so as much as we love to just flip the switch and turn it on you've got you've got marvel studios you've got sony you know there's a lot of things um but i think jesse is is a fan of that too and so if, if the stars align i think we we will do one eventually all right, so it's it, it's on their radar. Everybody, I think, yeah, almost every Marvel Legends collect, collector is asking for that. And then, um, is it going to be a regular thing that build a figures are going to get re-released in deluxe packaging with repaints from now on? Is that kind of like, that seems to be the trend. Is that something that we can just kind of expect from here on out? Which I don't think is a bad thing, but... Someone else asked the... about it too, but no, go ahead, Dwight. Well, I'll say, I think it depends on the caliber of the character in, in some cases, you know, there's some characters that we do as builders that are very niche and, and, and which is great. I don't think those will ever make it back out. So, um, or at least there's no plans, but when it's a character that's, you know, we might create just because it's too big to do as a normal character, like the monster venom of a couple years ago, it's like, it was just such a great figure. And you're like, okay, you know, we can redeco that and bring that back out. And possibly, as you know, like with Kingpin, we'll retool pieces to do other variations of them. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think we would ever uh, make a Build-A-Figure, just sell it exactly as it was, um, unless we absolutely had to for some reason. But to get those big, big A-level characters back out there um, for the, the masses in a different way so that it's your Build-A-Figures are still special, um, I think that's one piece of it, and I'm not sure where you were going to go, Ryan. Yeah, so when we were, when we were thinking about builder figures or deluxe style figures larger, you know, than normal, I think there's three main ways you could do it. You could do it um, as reissuing the builder figure that's purely deco. So that's the Monster Venom approach um, from this year. Then you've got ways where we can add a little bit of new tooling to either make a slightly different character or a new character. So the examples are Kingpin with the ascot um, collar piece or a toxin, which had the backpack of tentacles and a new new head. I believe those were the new pieces. And then the third way, which is the most exciting, is it's just an all new deluxe figure that isn't a builder figure. And we, we revealed the uh, classic Thanos for 2021, which is all new. That could, That is a, about builder figure size. So it could have been a builder figure for a wave, but we're trying to think of ways to just put new deluxe figures out for the first time. And we actually have several planned for the future that we haven't revealed yet. Um, so stay tuned for more of that. But it's kind of like, it's not a hard and fast rule where it's like, yes, from here on out, every single Builder figure <laughs> will be released later on. So you don't have to buy the wave. It's kind of mixing and matching where appropriate for the stronger characters, like Dwight said, where there is a, deco, a meaningful deco change, like with Venom, yeah, we'll do it. But then for some of the more niche Builder figure characters, probably not. And then it's also that balance too. Like we've heard the, the cries for like Rhino and some of the others, you know, that, are kind of harder to come by at this point. So if there's a way for us to do that without treading on the original, so it's a deco change or a slight tooling addition, like, yeah, we'll, we'll consider that. that That's more likely than, than just like a blanket rule for that. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. It's kind of like we're like little kids, because like once you start repeating something, you get used to it really fast. So like, you know, every time we go to the zoo with the kids, the wife brings snacks, right? And we only did a little quick to the, you have to schedule it, you know, COVID rules and all that, right? And she didn't bring snacks yesterday. It was only like a little, very quick visit. And my daughter was like, where's the snacks? And we're like, well, okay, we're not bringing snacks every single time. But she got used to it because every time it was there. So you guys are going to repeat something. We're going to get locked in and expect it to keep on going. So, 
yeah, that, that's, I think it's normal psychology, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, from what you've seen online, would you say that the dumbbell joint uh, for the neck is more well received than the dumbbell joint with the hinge? I think it's. I guess we're going. Hey! Hey, I'm short of his prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.